exponential growth. Okay, exponential growth, it grows quickly. It's different than linear. Like if something's a linear growth, then it just multiplies by the same number each time. Exponential, uh, it goes up by a power each time. So if you take like the number three and I multiply by two, I get six. Then I multiply that by two, I get 12. By two, you get 24, okay? That's a linear, but if you take the three and you square it, you get nine. And then if you square that, you get 81. If you square that, you get a huge number. So exponential growth goes up a lot quicker than a linear. Um, an exponential growth graph is going to start and then it's going to start climbing quick like that. Okay, so it goes up from left to right. Next we're doing exponential decay, which would start high and it go low like that. Okay? So here is the growth model. Y equals some number times something raised to the T. Um, C is the initial amount. That's what it starts at. And that's the same when we do decay next. It's the initial amount. R is the rate that it grows. And it'd be the same thing when it's a decay. And T is the time period in years. Okay. The only difference when we do the decay next is this will be one minus the rate. So um, an example of a growth problem would be something like this. Okay. Y equals three times 1.2 to the fourth. Um, if they asked you what the rate was of this, it'd be what? Remember in the parentheses, that's one plus the rate. So what would that be for a rate? 0.2, which is what as a percent? 20%. So whatever it's over the one, that's the rate. If you had y equals 200 times 1.04 to the sixth, the rate would be 0 0.04, which is 4%. So compound interest. Um, last year, while in seventh grade two, we did the simple interest problems. Anyone remember the formula for simple interest? Is it like the like I equals PRT? PERT, yep. I equals PRT. Um, so like if you invested some money and say you put $500 in and you're getting 8%, which would be 0 0.08, and you left it in for five years. The interest then, you gotta multiply all those, is $200. Which means at the end of five years, you'd have your 500 you started with, plus 200, you'd have $700 which is called the balance. Balance is the total. Now, that's just a simple interest, and that works <coughs> whether you're investing money or you're borrowing money. You can use this to get an idea. But they call it simple interest because it's not exact. Most things are compound, which uh, means it's compounded over and over and over again. There's different types of compound interest. There's yearly, like this problem. There's um, quarterly, which would be how many times a year? Four. Four. There's monthly, which would be 12. And then there's daily, compounded daily. That means every day they figure out your interest and add it on to what you started with. Now, <coughs> since this is compounded yearly, 
the difference in this problem would be like this. Every year, they got to figure out what the interest is. So we figure out what it is after one year. It'd be 500 times 0 0.08 times one, it's $40. So that means after one year, you have $540. Then at the end of the next year, they figure it out again, but what has changed now? You have 540 in there now. So you have 540 times interest times another year. And that'd be 43.2, $43.20. So now, after two years, you have $583.20. So there's two, we gotta do this five times. So at the third year, we now have more in there. It's 583.20 times 0 .08 times one. That'd be 46.66. So you gotta add that on to what you had there. Six twenty nine eighty six. Oops. And we got to go two more years. So then the next year you had six twenty nine eighty six times point zero eight times one. That's dollars and 39 cents so at the fourth year six eighty point two five and then the last year they take six eighty twenty five times point zero eight times one And it's $734.67. So you made $34.67 more by it being compounded yearly. So you can imagine if they compounded it daily, it'd be even more than that, right? Okay. Which a lot of times it is compounded daily in an investor's account. Anyone here ever watched uh, Office Space, the movie? No. no? In there, they're mad at the business they're working for, so they develop a computer program that rounds, it takes rounded cents and it deposits it into their account. No one remembers this? No. Well, anyway. Watch it. Huh? Watch it. Yeah, this is a good movie. No, I'm not saying. Yeah, we can watch it in here. It's R, so we can't. No, no. <laughs> so what happened here is like this was rounded. This was rounded and this was rounded to tenths of cents. So the whole idea was in their virus is they took those tenths of cents that were rounded and disappeared and put it into an account of their own. And then they found out that they had, uh, after a week, there was 380 some thousand dollars in there. He had messed up, he put a decimal in the wrong spot. So they were thinking they were gonna get caught. So they ended up burning the place down. <laughs> yeah, that's a terrible idea. So, anyway, when you compound, you don't wanna go through all this and do it every single time. So we can use, um, an exponential growth. This is a growth because it's going to get bigger. We can use this formula to figure it out. 
So we take the original amount. Oops, 450. I should have used these numbers so we could have compared them. But times 1 plus the rate. The rate is 2.5%. Now this is where people mostly screw up is, remember you got to move the decimal two spots. So it'd be 1 plus that is 1.025. You got to remember to move the decimal. And then it's raised to the number of years, 10 years. Ever remembers how to do the exponent key? Care key or the Y to the X key? So that would round to $576.04. Now, if this was a simple interest problem, if we just use this formula, you'd take 450 times the rate times the time. And you would get $562.50. So it's pretty close. So that's why they call it simple, because it gives you an idea, but it's not going to be exact if it's a compound interest. Okay? All right. Everyone remember what balance means? It is the amount. The total amount, yep. Balance is the total amount. Okay, so here's another exponential growth. Mice, and they do this with rabbits a lot. Population of 25 mice doubles each year to four years. So we got to figure out what is the percent increase each year. If it doubles, what percent is that? So, say say we've got 25 mice, and it doubles. If you said it was 50%, uh, we take that times 0.5. That would be 12.5, which means you'd only have 37.5 mice, right? because this was the original and this is what it went up. So it's not 50%. Five. It's got to be the same. Oh my gosh. Yes. What does this number got to be in order for this to double? It's got to be 25, right? So what do you got to take times 25 to get it to? One. Jeez. I said 100%. Yep, it is 100%. 100% wrong. Because you're taking 100% of it, which means it's going to double up. 100% of 25 is 25, which means you would have 50 mice. Okay? It doesn't make sense to me. Huh? It doesn't make sense to you? I need these on the sign. Okay. Here's the original amount. Oh, it could use add together. Times 100%. Equals, oh, that's percent, equals 25, which is the increase. So that means it started at 25, it increased 100% to give you 25 more. So this is how many more you've got. So now I have 50 mice. Yeah. So then the next year, it's going to double again, which means you take it times 100% to get 50. So it was 50, you added 50, now there's 100. Okay. So the... Um, the percent of increase each year if something doubles is 100%. Now, I heard someone say it right away, and that's the most common is 200%. Because 200% is times 2, right? Okay, so on these, it's a little bit trickier. So, <coughs> to figure out the population, we got to use the formula. Y equals the original amount, which is... 
25 times 1 plus the rate. What's 1 plus 100%? 101. Someone please should know this. Yeah, what? Two. Two. All right. 100% is 1.00. 1 plus 1 is 2. Raise to the fourth. Okay, so 25 times 2 to the fourth is 400 mice. That's a lot of mice. After four years, yep. Mice. It's, it's called mice. Mice. Mouses? No, it's not mice. It's mice. Mice. Mice is the plural of mice. Okay, so here's the problems we've got. We've got some money ones, um, and then the exponential problems that increase. So you need to know the formula. Oops, not interest. It's y equals the original amount times 1 plus the rate raised to the t. So here's the original amount. The rate is 3%, and again, this is where most people get it wrong. 3% is 0 0.03. 1.03 raised to the number of years. Yeah, pay attention, you guys. My juniors are doing that right now. Are they? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Five hundred three dollars. Now, in money, how many decimal places are there? Two. So this gets to be uh, nine, six, eight, six, four, two, three. So this would round up to seven, right? It'd be five hundred three dollars and ninety seven cents. Round the nine? Like the nine up no, that would be rounding to the nearest dollar. Yeah. You got to round to the nearest cent. Okay, yeah. so another exponential growth. It starts with 20 employees, so that's what C is, times the rate. Uh, we got to figure out the rate. You haven't done this, well, you did it last year, I guess, seventh and eighth grade. After one year, it's 30. So it went from 20 to 30. Does anyone remember how to find that percent? No. You divide 20 by 30. No. I've never been able to figure out why this is so hard for kids. To find the percent change. So you minus them. You minus them, right? The change, it changed 10. And then you always divide by? Two. Two. Five, 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 uh, ten. One, one, twelve, point five, fifteen, ten, three, one, six, seven. Okay, eight. when you figure out your test score, you take your score divided by what? How, the, how, many, how many, much it was worth, the total, 50, right? So 30, 30. No? 20, 50. 50. The original. I said 20. Okay, it's uh, the how much it changed divided by the original, which is 0.5, right? Mm -hmm. So the percent increase is 50%. So this one, we had to figure out the percent increase. Um, so the number that goes in here, you got to move it two spots, would be 0. 0.5, would be 1.5 raised to the sixth. <laughs> and it would be 227.8. 125. Now, since this is a population problem, this is where you got to use some common sense. What would I. Yeah, you can't have a decimal amount of people. So you need to know where you would round. 228. 228, right. How do you know 